It was an apotropaic symbol. Now, this comes from a Greek word meaning turn away or from, and it's a method of warding off witches or evil spirits or demons from a building, protecting the occupants. Um, it, it comes from an ancient Jewish tradition, uh, which is written down in the Babylonian Talmud, whereby God gave um, Solomon a seal ring which could repel demons. Now, with the Abrahamic religions, um, it was passed down, firstly into the Arabic tradition, where it was interpreted as a six-pointed star. When it came into the Western Christian tradition, it was reinterpreted as a five-pointed star, a pentagram or a pentangle. <laughs> Excuse me, I've just dropped the mic. Um, so this five-pointed star. Now, most of us think about five-pointed stars as heavy metal and satanic worship. That couldn't be any further from the truth. We're not dealing with church burnings in Norway here. Originally, the five-pointed star was a protective symbol. Um, and it was only in the later 19th century that it was reinterpreted and literally turned upside down to become a symbol of evil. Originally, then, in the medieval period, it was seen to protect the, uh, the person interacting with the five-pointed star, so much so that in the late medieval poem, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, Gawain actually has the five-pointed star on his shield and on his cloak and on his horse's uh, drapes there. And this was protecting Gawain as he went on that great travel to meet the Green Knight in the Green Knight's Chapel. Um, we can see it again, contemporary, almost contemporary with the marks at Knoll, where we can see it in uh, uh, early modern plays. So um, Robert Greene, a contemporary of Shakespeare, actually uh, wrote down that uh, one of his characters, um, Friar Bacon, uh, forcing a demon to bow down to the force of his pentagerin. It has the, 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 the ability, this symbol does, to actually pin down the devil. And then later on, we can see it in Goethe's uh, Faustus as well, so much, much further down uh, in time in, in the tradition. But we can see that this pentagram has this protective power. And you can actually see it drawn onto the uh, walls of churches in Norfolk, such as here at Troston, where you can see the pentagram actually literally pinning a demon to the wall. And that is its purpose. That is how it uh, protects people. There was this belief that demons weren't very clever. And if they saw a line, they wanted to get to the end of it. If you create an endless line, that demon becomes trapped in it forever. They're not very bright, these demons, apparently. An, an offshoot of the, uh, of the endless line of the pentagram is actually these mesh patterns which are often carved onto buildings as well. It performs the same function. It's pinning the demon to the wall. You also get checkerboards, a similar, uh, a, a similar attribute there as well. Jacob's ladders, again, similar, this, this idea of lines pinning the, uh, the demon to the wall. You get what are called Marian symbols as well. This is a Catholic belief. Uh, it's invoking the protection of the Virgin Mary. In this instance, it's a simple M for, for Mary. Sometimes you find them um, uh, as Ws or VVs, standing for Virgo Virginum, uh, a way of invoking the protection of the Virgin Mary uh, against uh, satanic forces. Daisy wheels, again, an endless line. Uh, you also find burn marks as well. This is, this is sympathetic magic. This is fighting hellfire with fire, a bit like inoculation. If you have a little bit of a scorch in a building, you might not have a big conflagration. It's that idea. And you also find concealed footwear and clothing, shoved up chimneys. Quite frequent finds those are. Um, I've, I've recently found something very similar to this at the uh, Tower of London, which we actually reported in The Independent on Saturday. Um, and there seems to be this link that James himself made explicit, that there was a belief that witches and spirits travelled through the air. Wherever the air flowed, then a witch could enter a building. Now, you can shut your window, you can shut your door, but you cannot block up your fireplace. And these are the three places where we find apotropaic symbols in association with doors and windows and fireplaces. Um, there is this idea of the witch bottle, of course. Sometimes these are buried. They contain iron and maybe urine and, and, and scraps of artefacts, and they're buried underneath the threshold of the door. Again, it's the same idea of protecting the household against the penetration and possession by evil forces. And I've already mentioned the shoes shoved up the chimney. But just to give you a little bit of a folkloric insight into this, 
there is this idea of the window peeper. He's one of the Yule lads in Iceland. These are their gift bringers at Christmas. There's 13 of them, and they all have these quite sinister attributes. Well, one of them is the window peeper, and he peers in through the windows and scares children. And the way that they ward him off is by putting a shoe on the window place. And that kind of calms him down, and he leaves sweets for the children. And, and this happens on 13 separate nights in the lead up to Christmas. And there seems to be this, this very turned around tradition whereby there is this idea of the possession of a building by a spirit who's coming in through the window or, or down the chimney in the case of this fellow. Remember, this, <laughs> this, is, this, is a, this is effectively a spirit coming down the chimney. And you, ward, you, you don't necessarily ward him off, but you appease him by hanging the stocking on the mantelpiece. It's the same tradition. It's turned around and it's twisted and it's been altered and Christianized. But this is that same apotropaic function of dealing with the spirit coming down the chimney. So next time you actually hang up your children's stockings, you are engaging in thousands of years of history. And I'm sure you've all thrown salt over the shoulder or touched wood. I have a horseshoe hung, hung over my back door. You know, these are all things that we still do that fulfill these functions. And just in case you don't believe me, here's an early 17th century illustration of a very weird coven going on. It's a German illustration. You can see the witch coming down the chimney here. You can also see that the occupants of the house have actually marked up their hearth. There it is blown up. And there is the VV, the Virgo Virginum, invoking the protection of Mary. But it's been scored through, and that's cancelled out the apotropaic function, and therefore the witch can actually enter the building. And there it is in a 17th century illustration. 